It's a hardy construction. You can find us on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram with your host comp and Rodney Dangerfield. Ah, ye, wo, ye. It's Halloween 2018, so today's film is Halloween 2018. <laughs> Halloween 2018. Laurie Strode confronts her longtime foe, Michelle Ma- Myers, the masked figure. Near Myers. The, fig- the masked figure who has haunted her since she narrowly escaped his killing spree on Halloween night four decades ago. Directed by David Gordon Green. Written by David Gordon Green as well as Danny McBride, the comedian actor from a lot of comedy yeah. films like uh, Pineapple Express and stuff like that. He's from that trailer show, right? Yeah, he's sort of, uh, he's like one of those really, um, one of those those comedy actors that a lot of white people like, so... You know, the sort okay. of indie comedy stuff. He has like a... It smells like pee where I'm standing right now. It's great. Where are you standing in right now? I'm standing in the corner in a wind tunnel area. Well, in a where? anti-wind... Oh, in... Uh, Europe, right? Soviet, Soviet Russia. Nice. Really? I thought you were in the, in the Ukraine. No. Okay. no, I'm in Eastern Europe. Starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, Andy Mai- Matichak. It also has a score by... John Carpenter and his son. So Halloween 2018. Why did I pick and this? And the Bloom. Bloomhouse. Yes, Bloomhouse produced this film. So why did I pick Halloween 2018? Hmm, let's see. Anyway, uh, so this film obviously is, um, <laughs> it is a direct sequel to Halloween 1. It disregards Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, Halloween 6, Halloween 7, even gets Halloween rid of the part 8. Where he's a demon. And it also disregards, yes, and it also disregards Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and Halloween 2. What about 2. the Tyra Banks one and the Buster Rhymes? That, I mean, that was Halloween nice. 8, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. I was, uh, you know, the, I realized that Halloween movies are pretty good to black characters in their films. Well, except for, uh, who's that That famous hot model? The uh, hot, like, tall uh, African-American model. She was in Tyra Hall- Banks? Yeah, she gets killed in, in, in the one with Buster Rhymes. But Buster Rhymes and LL Cool J survived their Halloween films, so that's good. That's All like the badass. That's true. Well, <laughs> I still love uh, Buster Rhymes saying, You look like some chicken fried motherfucker. And I was like, Oh, brother, was that a racist <laughs> line or what? That was. That's when they were trying to partially urbanize, I guess, the Halloween franchise. Because whenever they write black characters for these movies, they like, do it really terribly. Just watch Leprechaun yeah. in the Hood and the Leprechaun in the Hood too, I guess. Oh, anyway. Leprechaun in the Hood is the best depiction of uh, you know African American life I've ever seen. African American and Irish American. Oh, not Irish American. They Irish come American. together yeah. to form that beautiful movie. <laughs> that's that's a movie that shows the direct relations between uh, different uh, ethnic backgrounds. Anyway, so this movie is obviously, like we said, it's a direct um, <laughs> sequel to the first film. It is produced by Jason Bloom and his Bloomhouse Productions. Bloomhouse Productions just like they just can, can't do any wrong. Yeah, basically. they can they can print any cash they want. This movie um, debuted at like eighty million dollars. So like right next to when Venom, a surprise hit, because Venom was getting shit on so much. Um, and yeah. that like made was it good? Mind. I didn't see it. It's all right. It, it, Venom is sort of like the thing is I like Tom Hardy as an actor like a lot. He yeah. played Bane in The Dark Knight uh, Rises, and Tom Hardy uh, is just good. He's entertaining to watch, and the movie is sort yeah. of it feels like one of those sort of '90s cheapo action comic movies. But how movies. can they get into Venom if they haven't even gotten into the symbiote? Well, essentially they Spider-Man. just they just did the same storyline but they just took Sp- Spider-Man out cuz the whole point of the, the Venom character is that his that goo comes from outer space on a rocket and it just finds its way on somebody else. Now, it's essentially the same thing they just took out um Tom yeah, Holland. Yeah, but it's Spider-Man. kind of it's, it's, it's essential yeah, that yeah. Spider-Man goes to Yeah, I mean whatever. the I mean the fucking Venom suit looks like Spider-Man. There's a reason why it does that, but I guess they don't give a shit. They just want to make money. And they made money. So so anyway, Halloween a, a very big success uh this week that it came out. Um it brings back um not only Jamie Lee Curtis who actually was in like two other or three other sequels of Halloween. She was in Halloween 2. She was in Halloween mm-hmm. Resurrect, no Resurrection. She was even, she was even in that Buster Rhymes one. That's Wasn't it, she? Resurrection. She gets killed in the beginning of that one. She was also in the one yeah. before that. She was like a primary um, character in Halloween H two O, which was not very good. That was written by Kevin Williamson, the guy who wrote the Scream films. But that was like sort of a boring film. Mm. 
and uh, she gets killed in the one after. It was a se- Halloween H two O is essentially the same movie as this in a way because she has a daughter and she's taking care of her and 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 yeah. it's just bullshit. They even have the they even have the babysitter aspect back. Oh yeah, it's the same fucking it's the same fucking movie, but this is like. But everybody's going crazy saying this is the greatest movie ever, and they're trying. And the thing is, with David Gordon Green, mm. he's um, I, yeah, I know. David Gordon Green is a pretty versatile director, which is pretty interesting, because yeah. like his films are all like really different types of films. He does a lot of genre. I'm um, not genre, sorry, like drama films and stuff like that. So it's really interesting right. that this is his first uh, horror drama. film. Drama. Um, he he did stuff like uh uh let's see let me see right here uh his first thing was this movie called George Washington which was like an inner city film about a young African American boy and that got a lot of you know stuff he got Pineapple Express which is a comedy which is why he knows Danny McBride I assume Your Highness was mm-hmm. like a shitty medieval comedy so he's doing a lot of comedy stuff and then he started doing more serious stuff um but so and then when he jumps into this which is nice because direct seeing directors do different types of films is interesting. Um, and yeah, he's certainly he certainly is a good director. He has a good eye. The film certainly looks good, and it has nice stuff. It's in it, a but good it's, movie for what it is. It's an it's an okay thing. That, parts. Here's the thing with this: like I watched this, and I watched a bit of like Halloween Rob Zombie version, and I uh-huh. really can't tell the difference. Like I don't know what makes this better than the Rob Zombie one because people are, like totally because yeah, people did, everyone hated the Rob Zombie one. It be, wasn't that bad because what happens is like the Rob Zombie Halloween one. They like show Michael Myers as a kid. They give him a face. They make him human. So you know what? what I mean? I know. So that's what pissed people. You, you're telling me that him being a fucking uh, um, chosen by a demonic cult is better than him we being a fucked up kid? We only want someone standing there with a mask on. Yeah. We I don't know. want him to have anything else. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't understand it because like the Halloween is the same shit. Like, what, what innovative thing? I mean, thing? if anything, the whole movie, the whole idea of Loomis and all this stuff... Like invites the idea of a, a bad, like it's saying his his doctor is like fascinated by this serial killer and blah blah blah. Well, so then it makes sense to show. And here's the thing: what well, he killed, what like four people in the original film? Like, uh, I don't remember. He, he kills... killed he killed the babysitter. He killed her boyfriend. He killed like maybe two other people in that original film. And and in here they treat him like oh oh my god like, he's a monster he's terrible like. Do you, you know, yeah. like, there's Dennis Rader, there's fucking the guy, the the, 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 the uh, co-ed killer. Do you know what I mean? There's so many other people that killed so many other people. and But I guess it's because it's in Haddonfield, yeah. the town itself, that they treat it with such reverence. Because I don't mm-hmm. think, like, outside of that area, nobody would give a flying fuck about Michael Myers. Well, it's like that kid says, the boyfriend... He's like, what's the big deal? Yeah, right, that's true. So this film focuses, it's actually, there is no real central focus in this film. There is, like, not really a main character, because they're selling it like it's Jamie Lee Curtis as a main character, but she's, like, she's about a guy, she has about as much screen time as Michael Myers does in this they film. Got, uh, they got Fatty Magoo, Judy Greer, in there, which was pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like who's from, that? Uh, from, uh, it's Always Sunny. They're oh, like, okay. They, her name was she Fatty on that? Magoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's like a guest star for like two episodes, and basically the gang used to call her Fatty, or everybody used to call her oh, Fatty. Oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. School. Yeah, I do remember but that. But she's like all like hot and good looking, and they just yeah, Judy, her Fatty Magoo. Judy Greer has been in everything. Like, I remember seeing Arrested her. She, Development. She's been in she's a lot awesome. of comedy shows. She's very, she's like. I love her. Yeah, she's, she's great. Um, And uh, she's obviously been recently more in the Ant-Man films, but she, they don't, like, She's sort of one of those dependable actors where you can see them in stuff and you don't have to worry about them acting because they always... Oh, wait, she's she's the mom in that, isn't she? Right, right, right. So, But she doesn't, like... She's not as useful in those films. That's just sort of like yeah. an okay sort of film. You know what I mean? It's, it's sort of like when they bring in... I forgot who they brought in for... Did you see Doctor Strange? Yeah. Who who, was, who played the girlfriend? She's like an actually good, like, known actor and they brought yeah, her in. Yeah, that's like a generic... Kate. Girls yeah, like, it was uh, like generic, the, generic love superhero, interest. Yeah. Like these, like they just bring them in for generic love interest in the Marvel movies. Anyway, yeah. um, that was the same thing with like Captain America. Like I don't know if you remember seeing, you've seen the Avengers oh, films. The, you know how they yeah, like yeah, yeah. But suddenly they make her a thing eventually. She comes back. She's all old and shit. No, no, I'm talking about the other girl. Remember there was like a blonde girl in Civil War that like oh, yeah, kisses yeah. Captain she America, and like you're like, wait. 
And people were like, wait, I thought he was gay for the Winter Soldier. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, even... They, yeah, people did think that, didn't they? I, they still think it. I think they brought in that blonde That's girlfriend stupid. for Come Steve on. Rogers. Just, oh, offensive, Danny. Offensive? Let them let <laughs> Captain America... <laughs> no, I'm just... He's not, no. If a Captain America wants a tight uh, rear end, then that's up to him with a muscular hand job by robot hand. R- like anyway. A, a, me- a metallic hand job. Just like a metallic hand job, Michael Myers is undestroyable. And uh, imagine, he is. In imagine this... you go to one of those like time massages with the happy endings and they have that metal arm like the Winter <laughs> Soldier. And, like, Your dick ends up in know, the they, ceiling. They're massaging you at like hyper speed and then they do that and just like castrate you but you know what there is somebody that's probably into that so this film follows um it's what 40 years after you how many years and it's like it's like Jax from uh street fighter or uh, mortal kombat (laughs) i mean like he comes out (laughs) and then you hear like ding 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 ding, friendship anyway that's the wrong one so yeah i remember that so this film takes place 40 40 years after um Whoa. whoa Michael Myers is about 70 years old in the film or something like that, I guess. They actually have the guy who originally played the shape in the original film is playing him in certain scenes, not obviously not the like more stunt crazy sequences. And um, mm. Michael Myers is being processed from an insane asylum or I'm sorry, a psychiatric ward to a big house jail because I guess he was so fascinating. He killed five people, four people. Fascinating. I can't believe it. Meanwhile, like guys who are like <laughs> guys who are like rapists and murderers go straight to jail, but him because he wore a clown mask and killed his sister and whoever the fuck else, all of a sudden, oh wait, wait let's what let's let's find out his mind. He's he's so important. Michael Myers. <laughs> I mean it's so fascinating. He killed four people. Four people. He could have killed twenty people, but four people now no, 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 hold on. Well, let's figure him out. All the sequels he killed like a hundred people. But they don't exist in this timeline. That's the thing. Yeah, I guess not. So they're all you know, Haddonfield is obsessed with finding out why the fuck Michael Myers did what he did. You know what it is? He's nuts. How about that? That's that's an answer right there. So <laughs> anyway, it's forty it's forty years later. Um uh What you know what I'm curious about? How can a man get hit by a car or shot or have his hand shot or be falling down stairs or get punched in the face or whatever and be perfectly fine. Well, here's the thing. How can a man uh, get burned to death in a <laughs> locked up basement and they're coming back with a sequel? So we'll figure out then too. Um, so yeah, he's how, locked- can a man, how can a man punch through a thing designed to stop criminals like in a police car? He's, Speaking of, I hear police on. Well, there you that go. Weird. That was part of the movie. This is 3D audio, 4D. Uh, <laughs> so he is locked up. Um, we're dealing with Laurie Strode. She is not his sister, like she was in the sequels. There's no mention of Danielle Harris. I've only seen about three, three or four Halloween films myself. I think I saw, I saw Halloween the original. I saw Halloween three, which is one of my favorite ones that a lot of people hate. Mm-hmm. So Halloween H two O, and I, I I saw one of the Halloween uh, Rob Zombie ones. Oh, and we also saw, okay. So and then I also saw Halloween that horrible one with Buster Rhymes. So I seen five yeah. Halloween movies out of like the. I never saw the Rob them. Zombie sequel. Was it good? No, I hear that's really bad. That's like when he starts like doing really weird. Because like Rob Zombie is sort of a king of white trash horror films. Like all of his movies yeah. are about like white trash people. And uh, that one, there's like sequences where Michael Myers is having um, hallucinations of his mother with a white horse. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, maybe he was just, maybe he was trying out stuff that he did in the uh, Witches of Salem. Or what was that movie called? Something of Salem? Whatever that movie was. That was a great movie. But he's trying more like weird, weird metaphysical shit in that movie that probably is like unnecessary. So people really did not, dis- did not like that movie. And also the sequels had... Um, a character played by uh, what the hell is her name? I just forgot her name. She's Danielle Harris. She's this like brunette girl. Um, uh-huh. She sort of became the stand-in Laurie Strode in the rest of the films. That I think she was playing Laurie Strode's daughter. Or she was somebody's daughter, and she was getting haunted by Michael Myers. And there was like a whole thing like Jason Voorhees, where she was going to become the shape, and then they just kept with the sequels. The, these movies are stay, uh, stayed alive because of Mustafa. When you say the shape, what do you mean by the shape? The shape is what Michael Myers' character is, na- is referred to in the script, the original script of the film. He's, uh, he's uh, listed as that character in, in the end credits. That's me being obnoxious. 
but he's called okay. the shape essentially and michael myers is just like a name and the shape is what he is it's That's like what that they awful um ed whatever song the shape of you <laughs> yes and um <laughs> so uh, imagine you just see ed sheeran start playing his guitar and he just starts singing to michael Myers. Ugh, i remember God, one I thing would, about I throw the movie out. one thing about ed sheeran that i feel bad with is like he's not like a drugs? traditional weapon you cry against him he's not a try he's not a traditional uh like good looking guy and it it seems for like for everyone they have to bring that up for some reason like the guy's famous and he's rich and you know he obviously is very talented i remember watching i think nbc in the morning or something and there's like laura bush she's like one of the bush's daughters and she's like now she she hosts television she goes she's one of the bush yeah she's one of george she's george w bush's daughter and she was like bringing up she brought it up like five times I remember because Ed Sheeran was going to play live for them and she's like uh -huh. it shows you the power of music that you don't have to look a certain way she brought that up like six or seven times like fucking uh -huh. hell like you remember la the hairy lady you're not even that good lady? looking huh do you remember that hairy angel lady it was like <laughs> oh. not American Idol but it was like the same thing with Simon Cowell but in hairy England. angel is that what they call it yeah. so it was this it was this lady she was like 50 she was, you know, she wasn't a good-looking lady, and she came out and she sang, and she did a... It was beautiful, and everybody was so blown away. Oh, I can't believe this ugly woman did I know, this. yeah. And then they, they tagged her as the hairy angel. This is like a regular <laughs> woman, you know? I think cause she had, like, bushy eyebrows, I think, but she was... Yeah, yeah but, but, like, people were going, uh, like, this... Can you imagine? And that's terrible, because they're like, this pig can't sing? Like, what the fuck is... No, no, that's exactly... It's almost like... It's a, it's unbelievable to people to because me. they're so used to good-looking people on television that they can't imagine an ugly person has talent. That's why this poor lady comes out <laughs> is like brave enough to go on TV. We sing a song to yeah, right. Responds her as the hairy angel. I know because you know you know how television is like they need a certain aesthetic for people. Anyway, back to this film. Uh, Daniel yeah. Harris is not in it. She was in like uh, some of those movies and. And she was like uh, writing, "Oh, I should be in the sequel. I should be in the sequel." And I, and the producers of this movie was like, "Oh yeah, you should." And then just didn't bother talking to her. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and John Carpenter like met her and didn't even know her because he's not sitting on why. He, I bet you John Carpenter hasn't even seen Halloween two through the rest. He didn't care. Uh, John Carpenter yeah. didn't care less about anything. He doesn't give a shit. Like, he well, seems he like makes a, his movies and they're great, and that's it. Especially that's Ghost of Mars and The Ward. Oof. And uh, but John Carpenter, they brought him back to do the soundtrack. I listened to the soundtrack and I, and I, I like it. He does more of these synth sort of. It's certainly not like the soundtrack from his heyday, like say They Live or. I liked it though. No, I liked it. It's a good soundtrack, especially the part where they kill that that rapist guy. And speaking of that rapist guy, I mean, guy, this is what about it? Finally, Michael Myers addresses the Me Too uh, lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah. Thank also, did you notice heavens. he didn't kill the baby? I like that. Yeah, they made a big deal about that because he actually does kill like a twelve-year-old kid in the beginning of the film. So I guess they were like, okay. uh, <laughs> so let's get X to the actual plot of this film. Well, Usually, you know, he's he's pro-life. Yes. <laughs> in what sense? For babies, you mean, right? Um, so he like uh, the whole movie is about Laurie Strode and her daughter. She's having a difficult relationship with her daughter, and I think the whole basis is they were trying to do some sort of some sort of deep drama dive with the relationship between mother and daughter, but it necessarily doesn't make Hello? anything important. Yeah, I hear you. It's not necessarily okay. anything important. Like they were, I was saying that they were trying to make it really dramatic with the mother and daughter relationship, but they don't really deep dive into it. Judy yeah. Greer, Judy Greer is once again sort of relegated to a background character. Um, I mean, I thought I thought they did an okay job considering that they it was a pretty quick movie. It was only like an hour forty five. But then they, they focus to, they focus on the granddaughter, and then like for no reason because yeah, they kind of dropped the ball. Because they focus on the granddaughter and they introduce a boyfriend that has no reason to be in the film other than to drop her cell phone in cheese dip. No yeah. other reason. It's like, are they gonna kill this guy or he didn't show up at the rest of the movie? He be he's a dick. He throws his. I'm glad they killed the friend though. Yeah, he's an idiot. Anyway, they throw his. They throw her cell phone in the cheese dip, and that's it. I was like, why did you have this guy? And it's funny because I was watching the Purge, the television show, which I'm actually enjoying. Um, yeah. The Purge is sort of like a real cheap 
sort of John Carpenter-esque, you know, people going crazy, killing each other type of television show. Right. So it's fun, and he actually shows up in the show, so he gets killed in that show. So if you want to see him get killed, go watch the Purge TV show. Spoiler. And uh, that plot... There's three things that, to me, that really stuck out that were incredibly stupid in this film. Uh, and we'll obviously one of them I'm sure you'll definitely agree with is the boyfriend subplot because it goes nowhere there's no point for it mm-hmm. other, she could have lost her cell phone fucking standing over a uh, sewer grate looking for something could have been that right. and then they could have shown more time on Laurie Strode because I didn't give a shit about the daughter I didn't give a shit about the boyfriend I didn't well, care about I, her stupid friends I like friends. the Judy Greer character and yeah I mean I, I meant the granddaughter I meant the granddaughter Judy Greer I like yeah I wish I wish they had done more with the granddaughter because they could have made Michael, like, specifically targeting her. The second one is a conversation between two cops in a car about lunch. And I oh, thought I that was, was funny, actually. I, can't, I couldn't believe it. I was watching it going, I couldn't believe this is in this movie. Apparently, it's a reference to another Halloween film because they reference every film in this movie, even though they, they don't see it as canon. Like, they have the kids with the Halloween masks from Part 3 on running around. And apparently there's mm-hmm. two cops talking about fucking food. I was like, this has got to be the stupidest shit I've ever seen in a horror film. It, like, it's... It, like... Yeah, like, when they say a halt to movie, like, a train fucking stops, that's exactly how it was. I was like, this this is no reason to be. Like, this is the type of humor that he does. David Gordon Green with um yeah. with uh, the, the, the writer. I just forgot his name. Uh, they did South... Uh, Out Eastbound and Down, which a lot of people think is a, is a great show. I've never really watched it. Um, and it's just that scene like I was like what the fuck and then the the switcheroo sort of um, insane psychiatrist who kills a police officer because he wants to <laughs> he wants to see how what makes Michael Myers tick that was easily the worst fucking thing I've ever seen and one of the things it's just so cheap and then like I was just talking about mm. the I was talking about the doctor sort of reversal in the film yeah, because it was horrible. That was like one of the worst things yeah, I've ever was, seen. Yeah, that was a little silly. They should have gotten more into it. But you know what? I didn't mind though <laughs> when you were talking about the uh, muffin joke. I cut out for a bit, but um, I thought it was pretty funny. I don't know. It was like ten seconds. Who cares? Ten. That felt like a whole two minutes. Um, weirdly no. enough, uh, Will Patton, who plays you know the officer that they said yeah, his character, the old guy. Yeah, he's the guy that narrates all of Stephen King's books now. That's why I was like, really? After yeah. the motorcycle accident guy. Uh, the other guy. <laughs> yes, that was his name, the motorcycle accident guy. Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, um, but he has such a weird voice. He pronounces uh, Cuthbert instead of Cuthbert. But he might be, that might be an acting choice as like. I know, but it was just like, oh, I heard like four He's got a, no, he's got a, guy. he's got a fantastic voice. So like, oh, I looked at the name, I was like, Will Patton. Will Patton. I was like, oh, fuck, it's Will Patton, the guy who does it. You know what? I want to, like, watch it again and listen to his voice better now, so that way I could, like, try to really hear it. Yeah, in the deleted scenes, he's just uh, saying the sex scene from It with all the kids. He just says that whole... Well, like, he's, he's behind, this, behind the scenes, like, whenever he's not acting, he's, like, working on the audiobooks, like, in a, like, sound booth, like, he's multitasking. If, if you look, if you look directly <laughs> under his collar, you see, like, a chained fucking, like, a, a collar around his neck and Stephen King in the shadows in the background um, <laughs> so Stephen, Stephen King is like in the shadows <laughs> masturbating and saying the n-word <laughs> because he Stephen, really loves saying Stephen that. King has the n-word a lot in his books even though he seems like a real cool guy that's a lot of shit in his books so um film starts out with a, with two um what did you think about the podcasters the British podcasters they were so was obsessed kinda, with it kind of went nowhere also yeah the, the woman is gorgeous whoever was a female I mean, podcaster they started that whole thing and then like ultimately they just die like really quick like that's they it should have i don't know they people were like some more with that people watching it were saying oh you know he might be the new michael myers because he got his head smashed into the wall so it might have made him crazy like no i think they killed him like what I think, that's I know. stupid <laughs> you know how people are because they see michael myers f- frying to death at the end inside that little is it, chamber. michael myers isn't a contagious disease like you don't like bash your head and now but you're they were like oh Myers. he's obsessed with him like the doctor was so maybe he'll become like the new michael myers since the old one dies and no he blatantly up. says it's just a serial killer like yeah what? all right uh, i don't know <laughs> anyway <laughs> um so that whole plot line um the husband sort of like an, a thankless role i think that was uh toby huss plays a husband yeah. sort of like a general guy he reminds me of people that are like on american horror story sort of like good actors yeah, he's, like just a, like, he's like a stupid typical dad sort of yeah thing. he's a good actor too and they just kind of kill him and that's it for him um they set up this whole sort of 
one-on-one -on -one fight with Michael Myers at the end of the film, but it mm -hmm. was like really repetitive and sort of boring fight. It wasn't really anything. Do you know, I, I don't know if what you felt about that final. It fight. was. I mean, he kicked our ass. Know, it was okay, like, but you know, for the amount of guns and shit there, and also it's stupid. Like, okay, so you shot him like once, twice, right? You're gonna lock this guy in the basement, and you have this like crazy weird spike trap door thing. Yes. And fire and all this shit. It's like. Fucking shoot him like ten times as he's standing at the stairwell. Yeah, right. You, because it's like don't, don't leave, don't leave the house. Shoot him in the face. Yes, like, 50 exactly. Times like what are you doing? And there's no obviously there's no explanation of his obsession with killing this woman in particular. Um, at least yeah. at least in the well, scene. Well, I mean, she is his sister. Or no, they she's say not. She is in... in this in this one, they say, um, oh, that was just a rumor. So they throw that idea right out the water. So. Th I mean, I guess that's not in the first one, huh? But, like, no, it's, it's implied in the first one. They well, how how would she be a sister? Was the father fucking around behind the mom's back or something? Or Oh, yeah, she... she no. The mother wasn't I'm married, Lori, right? Lori Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis, is his is, is younger sister, the baby. Oh, the baby. Okay, all right. Never mind. I didn't think about that. Um, I don't know if that's, like... A fi cause I feel like no, they, 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 they disregarded it. A bunch of times yeah, like they dis it's track. only in the second film. They disregarded that whole thing. For this movie so there's okay. no real reason that he's hunting her in this film other than just i don't know he's he has ocd he's an ocd serial killer i think uh, he's, i think she's his sister i think that's cam and i'm not sure it's only in the second film they said it and then they're not regarding the second one they since when they actually say oh i thought that's his sister and they go no that's just a rumor on the internet that's what they say so officially it's not canon anymore apparently according to this okay film. um so what what were the best parts of this film to you do you think um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is awesome. She's great in it. Yeah, she's always great. She's. It sort of sucks that she sort of has been only in. Once you're a scream queen, that's sort of what you're stuck as for some reason, which is crazy, because she's like yeah. obviously a very talented actor. She was in. Um, she's in True Lies. Yeah, she was great in that. She was also great in that. Um, she was in an Eddie Murphy Dan Aykroyd comedy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Trading Places. Trading that's Places. Movie. That's a great movie, and she's, that's one of my favorite movies. Actually, she's great in it. But you know, she sort of her first four to sort of five to six movies were like horror films. Um, so I think they sort of just see her that way. She was great on the first season of Scream Queens. Um, that second she's season awesome. was horrible. Um, but uh, you know, and then she's great on those activity. I hated that show. She's Scream in the oh she's in the great Activia commercials. You know that yogurt that makes you take a shit. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so she's sort of in here, and she has to deal with that. I guess that's Danielle Harris's cross to bear now. As a, and so she's like, I'll be back if David Gordon Green asks me to. Because John Carpenter was like, this is the last ha Halloween for the year, right? If I made eight, 110 million so far, no, they're going to fucking make Halloween in space. They're going to keep making them. I know, but come on. I know, just stupid. but that's what I think, because like, Jamie Lee Curtis, like, let Michael leave her alone already, because then... They've, like, re rebooted this series more times than Spider-Man at this yeah, point. Yeah, that's like, true. Just, like, or, Bat, or even Batman. J like, it's like, because no. like James Bond doesn't really count because it's different actors. James Bond isn't a reboot, it's always a sequel. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but like this, I, I don't know, it's just like, uh, here's the thing, like J John Carpenter um, did the score for it with his son uh, while he's not mm -hmm. playing video games because now he's more of a musician and uh, yeah. it's, it's he um was saying this movie will scare the hell out of you and i was like he must have fucking uh they must have had a bucket of money in front of him when he said that line because no it's not it's not a bad there's nothing film. special I, about this there there's nothing in this film well, there's nothing special to us because we are like jaded super horror yeah we're jaded super knowledgeable horror people but if you're like a person watching this, like you watch the first original one. Oh, it's definitely a fun it's film for good. people. I like how it's actually crowded with Halloween people, like people celebrating Halloween when he's going from house to house, and you see kids yeah. running around the house, and then Michael Myers like sees that African American couple. He goes, "No, no, no, I'm not racist." He goes, "I know what kind of country this is." So he gets in. The, he just lets he, him no, go. No, psycho as he is, he understands those rules. He goes, he "I have to, to harm a baby." He was like this. I have to check my privilege. I will not bother any person of color tonight. <laughs> that's what he says, and that's in the deleted scene. Um, and he he decides to that's like. That's what he said. That's the one word he spoke to the uh, granddaughter. He goes, White privilege. He did that too. They just deleted all his lines, like the part when he kills the guy who uh, forces himself on the girl. He goes hashtag yeah. me too, and then he goes kills him. <laughs> um, yeah, that that was like. 
they they found a way to cram that into this movie. But you know what? That shit really happens in real life, so it's not really surprising that a guy would fucking try to force himself on a woman. So yeah, that guy gets killed. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 it's it's an okay film. There's nothing crazy about it. There's nothing sort of groundbreaking about it. I think it's a decent. I think of the sequels. That yes. I've seen, yeah. 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 It's definitely like one of the. They they could have done a lot worse. That's what I'm saying. I, I yeah, enjoyed it. I thought it was. We've seen them do a lot worse. The only thing to me was the worst was that fucking doctor flipperoo scene. That's the only thing that I thought was like really like so. Was, that was just the part that I thought was the worst was the um the friend. As soon as he starts getting attacked, he's like immediately over the top. Like it was silly. Yeah, but yeah, I thought the doctor plot point was just like so stupid because he's supposed to be the new Loomis. Um, I think they couldn't even. Yeah. Did they even use photos of the original Doctor Loomis? They just used drawings. I don't know what the fuck happened. Um, yeah. So I, mean, I thought it was alright. I, I like the film um, for what it is. What's your rating? I would give this movie a seven out of ten. Oh, I was about to say six, but it is a slick movie. It's well done. It's pretty quick, except for those dumb plot points that don't make any sense. It's a, it's a decent. It's a six. It's a six out of ten. Um, <laughs> uh, reading body language wrong, and getting impaled for it. Not the way you okay. want. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I agree with your original assessment. A 7 out of 10, spending 40 years building a house full of booby traps and fire and spikes, and then when you finally have the guy standing right in front of you, staring at you with fire on him, you don't shoot him in the head? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she wanted him to suffer. There you go. Shoot him in the stomach, then. <laughs> with like, that. Just do something. Shoot him. With that, Danny, what's the final word? Pee-pee smell in my nose. The horror deconstruction.